Sorry. Mr. Stiegel on again. Thank you everyone. Brian, thank you very much. And fellow winner of Name Members, it's an honor to be here tonight. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights for most of our life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You know, when Thomas Jefferson wrote those profound opening words for a Declaration of Independence, he wrote what many people believe to be the most important words ever written in the English language. Because with them he did two things. He launched the freest and most prosperous nation the world has ever seen, but he did something else quite profound. The founders of this nation shook the thrones of the kings and queens of Europe, the czars of Russia, and the emperors of Asia to their very foundations. Because for the first time in the history of mankind, what they told the world is that each and every one of you sitting in this room today, every single citizen is endowed with these certain unalienable rights and endowed with those rights by a power greater than any on earth by our Creator, by God. And that message, that message was delivered for the first time in the history of all mankind. You see, when you see a picture of that king holding up his scepter, <coughs> or that Asian emperor holding that orb, those were symbols of their connection to heaven. Those rulers believed they were God on earth. They believed that heaven handed down their rights to those symbols to them, and then they decided what rights they would give to us, who we would marry, how we would be taxed, whether or not we could own our property, whether or not we had the right to defend ourselves. And for the first time in the history of mankind, what the founders said is, no, those rights belong to each and every individual. And we loan yeah. those rights, we loan those rights back to the government, and they only govern with our permission. Those rights, those very core principles on which this nation are built are under attack today like never before in our lifetimes. And folks, many Americans have begun to take those fundamental rights for granted each and every day. But we cannot take them for granted. We're not allowed to take them for granted. We don't want to be telling the next generation how we fail to stand up in the defense of liberty. I've seen firsthand how easy it is to have those fundamental rights undermined and the effect they had on people. I want to tell you my, my story, albeit not all that heroic, or, but still a clear message. See, about a year ago, I was traveling the state of New Jersey when Governor John Corzine was proposing at the time to sell off our toll roads, he was going to raise tolls 800% to fund a massive borrowing program. And they did this by going around the state to these town hall public meetings to sell this to the public. And I said, wait a minute, there's something wrong. I don't like this issue. As an American, I have the right to oppose it. So I'm going to get people to come to these public meetings, and I'm going to get them to talk out against this issue and started asking questions. So the first meeting I think was in Essex County. We had a couple of people show up and ask questions then. The second was in Passaic and then in Ocean we had a couple of hundred people come and start asking very tough questions. And the government didn't like the questions. They didn't like taxpayers questioning what they were going to do. And finally I think it was the fifth meeting. We got down to Cape May. It was the Cape May Middle Town Middle School, Saturday, January 19th, for a town hall public meeting to hear about this program. And I had gotten a whole bunch of people down in Cape May area to go to the meeting and ask questions with little sheets of paper. The guy. And we got to that meeting that morning, and at this point, the government did not like the fact that its citizens were questioning them. So I was out in the parking lot of the Cape May middle town with about 25 or 30 excellent, good, well-meaning Americans, much like all of us here. And, and I was talking to them about the questions they should ask. Now, when I got to the meeting, there was about, I would say, 50 to 70 armed police officers, two riot buses, they had guard dogs. I thought I was in occupied territory, not at a taxpayer meeting. And I was in the parking lot with about 25 or 30 folks, one guy carrying an American flag, another having a Revolutionary War style drum, and telling them the questions they should ask when I was approached by a police officer. And the officer said to me, uh, sir, excuse me, sir, you can't do that here. You can't hand out your flyers at this public meeting. I said, wait a minute. Officer, this is a public meeting on public property at taxpayers' expense. I am exercising my First Amendment right. 
Well, the people in front of me got really quiet. And I said to the officer, look, you know, who says? He says, well, the governor doesn't want you handing out these flyers. So, well, look, I don't believe that at all. Let's go. So we went back. And, and by the way, I don't believe that. I, I don't know who told these men to do this. But as the guys in front of me got really quiet, I turned around and behind me were eight policemen in a row. And I realized it was going to take more men to take me down than John Dillinger. And as I was standing there talking to the police officer, I only had 10 to 15 seconds to make a decision. And my gut told me that I was not going to back down. That I had the right to hand out these flyers. That this was a taxpayer's meeting on taxpayer expense. And I said, officer, I'm sorry, you're not going to stop me unless you arrest me. So he asked me one more time, are you going to stop handing out your flyers? And I said, no. And that's when I heard the words, arrest this man. And for the first time in my 52 years, I put my hands behind my back and I was handcuffed. And I was frisked head to toe. And uh, they took away my very dangerous wallet. We do still have a right to carry a wallet, Lord, in New Jersey. And then I was taken away to, in a patrol car to the Middletown Police Station where I was handcuffed to the holding cell wall, where I was fingerprinted, mugshotted, and charged with something or other. And you know, I, I was in the police station. I, I, knew, I knew they had made a mistake. I knew I had a First Amendment right to do what I was doing, but that was not the issue. Folks, what the issue was is not what happened to me. It's what happened to those 30 well-meaning, patriotic Americans standing in front of me. You see, as I was getting arrested and handcuffed, you know what they did? They got very, very quiet. They got very quiet. They started shuffling their feet a little bit, and then they started moving away from me. You can see this on the YouTube video. And as I was being taken to the patrol car by the police officers, one gentleman leaned over and he said, we're really sorry. And I thought to myself, where's the outcry? Why aren't these Americans fighting back? Say, this is a public meeting. You can't stop us from handing out flyers. But no, in that brief moment, that our First Amendment rights, not mine, our First Amendment rights were taken away, you could see the chilling and oppressive effect of big government. As those people, in fear of the power they saw in front of them, and all good people, by the way. And I thought to myself, that's what it must have been like to live in Moscow, the Soviet Union, you know, when a patrol car would pull up on the streets and snatch someone right off the street and people would melt into a building and you'd never see that person again. Well, they made a mistake and that was the turning point in the end of that program of selling off the tow roads. But the lesson is clear. Our rights, our First Amendment right, that stands squarely, stands squarely on that Second Amendment right, hangs every single day in a very thin thread. Yes. You know, we have a very important challenge ahead. Whether or not we as Americans are going to rise to the challenge in defense of those fundamental rights. And, you know, we look to the founders of this nation for inspiration. And certainly we draw great inspiration from George Washington for his leadership and Thomas Jefferson for his intellect and Ben Franklin, Ben Franklin for his diplomacy and Thomas Paine when he wrote those profound words when Washington was retreating in defeat from the British. These are the times to try men's souls. To Patrick Henry when he said, give me liberty or give me death. But we cannot look to the founders for leadership any longer, folks. They're dead. Look around the room, ladies and gentlemen. You are the new founders. The future of this nation relies on the actions you take each and every individual. You know, that Jefferson was a, a pretty smart guy. He, I opened up with those opening words of the Declaration, and he knew in order to get that profound vision out there, he had to open up with this message that appealed to everyone, that to make the, it a reality, to make that vision a reality, he had to bring focus down to the 56 men who would step up to that table and put that quill pen to paper and make that vision a reality. And in doing so, they were committing treason against the crown. You know, the penalty for signing that document was to have your wives and children sold as chattel, to have your fortunes taken away, and then to be hung by the neck until almost dead before being cut down and drawn and quartered. Big sacrifice, big risk. It wasn't the opening sentences, I believe, of that great document that are the most important ever words ever written in English language. It's the very final sentence. 
So that's the sentence that drew those men to the table and sealed the deal for freedom and liberty. And it goes like this, that very last sentence. With a profound reliance on divine providence, we pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. And gentlemen, I hope and believe the people of America are ready to rise to that challenge again. I hope to have your support in the months and years to come so that our generation can defend the rights that's as the ones before us have done for us. Thank you very much. And God bless.